Hi again, welcome back to the fourth video of this intro to ArcGIS online series. We have left off last time with our neighborhood map with demographic data telling us more information. And you'll notice I went ahead and renamed all my fields so I understand what each value means. So we have our pop-up where it tells us the demographics that we added, the population, the median income, as well as the tenure of the neighborhood that we are looking at. But how much is the average home in this area? So we have to answer this with a different layer. Now I've been working on an ongoing project documenting the house prices in the GTA using the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. They come out with a monthly report documenting the home prices. So the average home prices for a detached, attached townhouse apartment. And what I did is take these numbers and apply the geography to it. So let's bring that geographic layer that I have been working on. So this is a layer that I have published on ArcGIS Online for people to use. So let's add that layer onto our map. So going back to our map here, let's click on Add Layer. And remember when we added a layer earlier, we add it within my content. What I want to do is add it from the cloud. So there's several different options you can choose from. You can add layers from a group you are part of, the Living Atlas, will, which we'll talk about this later on, or I might not be able to cover it, but check out the story map URL that's attached with these videos. But what I want, my main focus to grab that layer that I own. So I'm going to click it on ArcGIS Online. And I have several ArcGIS Online account, and this was done in a different ArcGIS Online account. So treat this as an individual that's sharing their data publicly. So I made that available publicly. I'm going to type in TREB, which stands for the Toronto Real Estate Board. And notice that the first thing that come out is TREB Current Statistics. And it's made by a username called Miho MKG. And that would be me, as you can see from the photo and the bio. So this is why I said having a profile page is important. Now going back to my map here, I'm going to hit a shortcut here and add that layer. And you'll see that a new pink layer has been applied onto the map. Now what I want is actually information within Toronto only. So how do I do that? Now, another thing we should be aware of is if we click back here and turn off the real estate layer, let me just turn that off. You'll notice as I zoomed in, the geography are different. So the real estate boundary here are different from the demographic data. So this is the real estate layer. And if I toggle through, you'll notice the boundary changes for the demographic neighborhoods. So that's something to keep in mind, but let's solve this problem one step at a time and isolate only the Toronto boundary. To do that, we will use the filter button. So selecting and turning on the real estate boundary here, so it's selected with the blue line here, we are going to click on filter. And what are we filtering? That's something we need to know. So let's take a look at the table format of this real estate layer. Clicking on show table, we can see that the geography has a name. So each of these boundary has a name. And also the Toronto area are split up different codes. So what we want to do is isolate rows with the Toronto contained in the geography field. So let's do that. We are going to select the field name here. So that's the geography and contains the word Toronto. So it's going to be case sensitive. So just remember to put a capital, anything to match this Toronto syntax here. We're going to hit save. And actually, before I even hit save, there was already a preview. So this is perfect. Now I only see the data set within my Toronto boundary neighborhood, as well as the records on my table has reduced to 35. So let's close this table and save our map document. 
While that is saving, let's think about our next problem. So our real estate layer has a different geography than our demographic layer. To reconcile the differences in the geometry of the boundary, we can actually leverage the analysis tool called overlay. To do that, remember we need to go back into Map Viewer Classic. So let's open the map in Map Viewer Classic. Go to our handy icon here, Analysis, and go into Manage Data. Here there is a tool called Overlay Layers, and we're going to select that. So we want to join the real estate information or the layer with our demographic neighborhood layer. Meanwhile, maintaining the same neighborhood geography as we had first brought in as our first layer. So what we want as an input layer, as our default layer, would be our neighborhood demographics. So select that. And we want to overlay our real estate layer with the demographics. So number two would be our real estate layer. And the method we'll choose to overlay is intersect, meaning any layer that intersects with each other, it'll create a new layer. So that's perfect because our boundary or geometry for the neighborhoods are smaller. And we want to keep that neighborhood boundary. So keep it as intersect, leave the output as default, and then give it a name. So I'm going to put in Toronto affordability layer, put my initials there, make sure I save it and share it and uncheck the use current map extent. Take a look at the credits here, 0.175. So not a lot, <laughs> not even one credit. So that's good. We're going to hit run analysis. And we'll let that run. And the same thing as the other analysis we did, this is going to create a new layer in the share folder of my content page. Ultimately, we'll have a map with four different layers with our most latest layer called Toronto Affordability Layer that has the real estate information, the demographic information, all contained within the neighborhood boundaries. So the analysis is finished running. And you'll see if I turn off the demographic layer, turned off my real estate layer, we have this new layer. It's a little transparent, but you can see that this Toronto affordability layer has all the Toronto information, neighborhood information, as well as the demographic information and also our real estate information. Benchmark pricing, the single detached home pricing, all of that are now in one layer. So now that we have finished this analysis, let's go back to open in a new map viewer. And it's going to ask you, do you want to save first? This time we're actually going to say yes, let me save first because we already learned how to add layers. Even though practice makes perfect, Let's not have to do that again. So let me save. So to save, you click on the save button here, hit save, and then go back into the map viewer that we are familiar with now. And you'll notice the Toronto affordability layer is brought in as well. So this is good. I like it. Let's save it now again in map viewer. And it's going to pop up and ask you, are you sure about this? You have to save in Map Viewer Classic. And I am actually very sure. So I'm going to save this map. And now this is now saved within the Map Viewer interface, not the old one. So we have a data layer that has all the information that we brought in, that we filtered out. And we are actually ready to learn how to visualize it. So until next video, which is going to be an exciting one because we're going to make everything look really pretty. Happy mapping and see you in the next video.